What is up, YouTube, and welcome back to another episode of Oxygen Not Included, Season 3. Now, I was obviously working on the farms and still working on that, but realised there's a bit of a backup. Now, this is paused, so they're not all backed up, but as you can see, that, that top line sorting is backed up. Now, it's backed up because they're both going into the same filters. Both of them, once they're on the end, are for polluted water, and as you can see, the polluted water is going straight through and then down. So that top one also has polluted water in there, doesn't have a chance to get through. So I need to separate these two lines. There's too much polluted water coming through from both of the different tanks. Obviously the one on the right, the main tank, which is what is running, is the one where we have infinite liquids because of the geysers. Uh, the one that's stuck is actually the temporary tank that I want to empty and get rid of because it's just ugly. So I need to re-plumb this so that both can run at the same time, but we are very constrained for space, as you can see. Usually you would just go, okay, I'll put another filter in, or I would just put a bridge over and make it its own separate line. Bit difficult to do, though, because we don't have any room to do that. So with a bit of jiggery-pokery, I can try and segregate them so at least they run in unison, so it's one after the other. Uh, but certainly not where one has priority over the other because that's what's happened there and then it's blocked the whole line up which means we're never going to empty that temporary tank that I already wanted empty a while back. So moving the water pipe over, uh, that gave me a space to then move the filter over one. So now you can see the pipe comes out of each of them into the centre and then into a bridge. That will mean that it will rotate so left right left right left right give them equal priority so that both should continue to run they may not run at max speed but they will definitely both run and nothing will back up and just jumping forward to that getting complete you can see there so they're coming in both of them go in left right left right left right down to that center and it is then of course allowing them to do both now i'm not sure why i've got two vents for them really but it doesn't matter same difference so this is the farms being done. Specifically, this is me trying to figure out how to do the lettuce. So obviously it needs to be underwater, and I'm using just clean water for that because it doesn't off-gas. We had a pipe pretty close anyway, and it was nice and easy. Apparently you can put too much in there, so that's the thing as well. Um, but then, of course, you need to get the salt water coming in to the... There we go. So you can see the salt water is coming in from my filters there. The idea here is that I'm using the salt water for the lettuce first. Then, when I get a chance, after I finish the farms, I'm going to send the excess back to be cleaned. So that first field farm I've set up seems to be working. They're happy with the amount of water in there. They're happy with the salt water coming in and the fertilization, which is, I believe, bleach stone. Uh, is it bleach stone? Can't remember. But anyway, there's fertilization involved as well. So I'm just copying and pasturing that up to the field above. So that we have two of those. Uh, don't want to run out of lettuce. Seems to be quite a good resource to have and feed them. So if I can get multiples of that going, that would be good. So that's two fields for mushrooms. Two fields now for, and I'm calling a field a room. But yeah, rooms. Two rooms for the lettuce. Above that, really, I want a couple of pincho peppers. But I need to turn all of the hydroponics things upside down. Uh, because they obviously grow downwards, so I'll need to rebuild them. But let me just finish the lettuce farm first and get them up and running. Because if I'm not mistaken, there is a serious amount of growth time involved in the lettuces. So while that's being dealt with, uh, the second asteroid, the issues with the pressure, there is definitely a bug. That is now 200 kilos per square. I don't know what's happened, but that would basically pop your face. Yeah, your head would just blow up off your shoulders. Uh, 200 kilos of pressure per square. So I'm not sure why or where it's coming from. It is definitely a bug. I've left it in on purpose to see what happened just in time. Didn't save, obviously, to see what would happen. And it just increases and increases and increases. So there was two solutions. The first one being move on which i'm not going to do because there's plenty of resources there and i want to do the bees the beehives or the beehives 
Uh, the other option is to just remove the carbon dioxide, replace it for a lower amount, which it should be. See, they're 200 plus kilos. That's crazy. Um, and we'll try and vent it. So the first step is to break open the boundary that you just saw there. That will then allow it all to vent into space. Hopefully that will work. With the amount of pressure, it should be pretty quick. If that does not work, I will just admin the pressure away and reset it back to sort of four or five kilos. Very high carbon dioxide result because that's where it should be. Uh, usually about four or five kilos is quite significant, especially when you're running lumber generators or coal generators. Um, and then we'll go from there. I definitely want to use the asteroid and the pressure is so high, there's no way of me getting oxygen anywhere useful because it's all been squished to the top. So yeah, we're going to send a, uh, a rescue rocket over, get in there, pop the cap so that we can release that pressure. Then send them home and give it a few cycles to see if that fixes it. If not, then an admin function will be required just to replace. All you have to do is click um, to change it to 5 kilos from 200 kilos. And then we'll leave it another couple of cycles to make sure it's not producing any more. If it is, I can turn it into a vacuum and look exactly where the carbon dioxide is coming from and just fix it like that it's a pretty simple bug to fix but it will take a couple of cycles per test to figure out what's actually happening rockets on its way so it shouldn't take too long to get there i think it takes like one cycle maybe one one and a quarter more digging more more digging at this point now we're just trying to get rid of all and anything that is a standard resource whether it be abyssalite which isn't used for that much stuff though i think we are using it for some of the hatches um, but other than that, it's not really being used, but it's just clearing everything out, right? To the point where I've got a nice finished map that looks like I've actually achieved something. We know we've dug down to the bottom base and that is finished. We know we've dug to the left-hand side to where the abyssalite blocks the magma off. I'm not getting involved in that mess because that amount of heat is going to cause some serious problems. Uh, there's just the right-hand side now, which the right-hand side doesn't have a hard stop. So I'm going to have to probably make one myself. So you can see a bit more digging in progress. This is for the rocket platform. So the rockets where they are at the minute, I want to move them over to the left hand side so they're not above or anywhere near the farms because the heat does pass through. Obviously the whole surface is going to be covered with a bunker tile. Anything below that that's atmospheric or non-atmospheric, so the vacuum of space, I'll have to block with drywall or wallpaper. Um, then we'll usually have a couple of levels below where the rockets launch and I'll fill them with the generators. So all of that heat that's thrown out of the rocket, we turn into free power. As long as the generators don't overheat, that shouldn't be an issue, but we'll have to wait and see. If they do overheat, we do have a asteroid that has the next tier of materials, which allows us to have an overheat temperature of something like it's 500 for the original Neo Summit or other. And then the one that you turn that into, which then becomes 900 plus. So we'll get to those. Certainly the 500. Whether we need to get to the 900 or not, I'm not sure. Because getting that high temperatures, unless we're going to start using, going for the cryogenic fuel. And I know that doesn't make sense because cryogenic is like negative 230 degrees. But to get something that cold, we're going to have to make something else very, very hot. And there we go. With the duplicate arriving at the second asteroid, we can pop the cork. Hopefully, as soon as that's all ripped out. And really, we only need to rip out those three tiles and that ground. Yeah, there we go. Uh, that liquid will fall down and the very, very ridiculously high pressured carbon dioxide should then vent out of the asteroid. Whether it will actually vent out reasonably quick like a shaken up bottle of champagne, I don't exactly know. Uh, we're about to find out how quick it moves. You should visibly see the gas move. Yeah, you can. There we go. Visibly seeing that. Uh, carbon dioxide rushing out into the vacuum of space. We'll get this guy straight back into the rocket and home. There's nothing else we can do here for now. I need to see if this resolves the issue. 
So we'll get him in there, get that launch. Plenty of uh, fuel there to get back. No problems at all. The Asteroid 1 to Asteroid 2 is a very short distance. I think fuel-wise, you might get three trips. Oxidi Oxidizer-wise, you'll probably get four trips. Uh, but we only need two, right? Because as soon as it lands home, it will get restocked anyway. So we will have to come back and look at this at a later date to see if it's working. You can see it's clearly working. All of that carbon dioxide, they're rushing out of the uh, map there and it will be deleted by the vacuum of space. I'm just not convinced how quick it's going to happen. Okay, so quite a bit has happened. If you've noticed, this is back to the second asteroid. We have jumped forward about 10 plus, maybe 15 cycles because a lot of testing ensued to figure it out. In a nutshell, though, so we can get back to actually what's happening, there was a serious bug. I don't know what it was. It kept venting, but I got it got to 300 kilos per tile below, and it just kept venting into space. I used the debug mode and removed all of that very high-pressured carbon dioxide and dropped it down to 3 kilos. Um, and within a cycle, it was 50 kilos. I then vacuumed it, so it basically deleted it. And now the asteroid is stable, as you can see. So I'm not sure what was happening, where the generation of carbon dioxide was broken or what tile was bugged, but I had to vacuum it. Basically deleted it and then let the asteroid fix itself. In the meantime, I have actually sent over five duplicates now to start working here. You can see they're working hard on digging up. They've got a nice flat surface down at the bottom and a couple of solar panels because I brought over some glass with me. The only glass I had. I hadn't made it. I'd found it or got it from the printer. Um, but you will also see we are now in the process of building to that far left hand side some Atmo suits or Atmo suit stations. And another jump. We are now on cycle 515 and this one is basically due to lag and lots of it so what was happening was there were so many items being transfer transferred through the conveyor belts um we it was just unplayable it was down to a few frames a second so i came away from it i set up like you can see the wall there i did make an end cap as i said i would I had to build a ladder to get to it of course that digging in the top left was done as well not much other digging's been done. There was a bit here that needed to be done to get this. And then obviously you can see all of that there has been filled in as well. I've deleted the um, ladders that needed to be that because it looked like shite. Um, and then down at the bottom here, all the stuff that fell was collected by this setup here, which was one of the things that was slowing it down. We had this one. We had the one on the other planet, on the other asteroid. And it was just bringing the game to a standstill. So while I set that up, I basically told them what to do and what to build. And then I went and had a nice long cup of tea and came back probably a couple of hours later or however long that was. It was about 15 or 20 cycles. You can see I've moved the process there as well, which it's now done automated. When it runs out of carbon dioxide, it takes some from the tank. Nice and simple, which means that bottom section has been cleared out as well. Nothing too traumatic has happened. That liquid tank finally got emptied which is what we wanted so i deleted that as well again nice and easy to delete because of change of structure and one tile gets rid of all of it it's all filtered into here there's a lot of salt water stored but that's not a bad thing because we need that salt water to keep our lettuces growing and then at the top here you can see the bunker tile plenty of steel and it's still going up 62 tons now so the bunker tile there which is to stop it from being broken by asteroids which it won't a couple of levels down, that is then a lead barrier to stop radiation from getting into my asteroid. And then below that is a uh, insulated tile, which, as you know, will stop the heat uh, escaping or coming, or the cold coming from the atmos atmosphere of space, or the lack of atmosphere of space. Now, a trial here was the rockets, the rockets and the electrothermic generators below so that we could see if that takes the heat it does but on occasion some of the even made of steel it melts the actual generator so we may need to think about that too the field's pretty much the same though there is pinch of peppers and sleep wheat in there now which i have automated with some heating and cooling all of it's connected actually so the machine there that is cooling the liquid you can see there and i've used petroleum so it can, I'm not worried about it freezing. There we go. 
Petroleum is going through there and going down to negative 30, negative 40, which water can't. Uh, that is keeping the sleet wheat very, very cold and allowing it to grow, keeping it below negative 5. This machine, however, throws out a crap ton of heat. So you can see then the pipe going round it is taking that heat away and putting that heat into the pincho peppers, which need to be 40 plus degrees. It's actually working very well so far. I mean, it's been working for probably three or four cycles and no issues. I'm quite proud of that, actually. Kind of made it up as I went along, uh, but it seems to be working. Now, there is two things that's happened. You can see now a lot of the storage is sorted. There was actually, though, a loop. One of the sweepers could reach two of the storage vessels, and it was basically just, in, in, uh, what's the word, indefinitely, there we go, indefinitely moving the items between storage, which, of course, we'll call as lag. Bedrooms all upgraded. All that needs is a lot of plastic, and we've had a lot of time to do so. While it was lagging, I just left into it. As I said, just kind of said, right, I want everything doing, and then I'll see you in a couple of hours. And I didn't lose anybody, which was quite good. Uh, I kept coming back to make sure the number didn't go down. I didn't lose anybody, so that's good. I expected to. Uh, you can see here the critter farms are doing reasonably well. That critter farm is actually at capacity, I believe. The one with the hatches, stone and diamond in, they are at 40. Which, of course, I'm assuming that's going to cause lag too. Now, if we do get lag moving forward where the rocket process and traveling to different asteroids and stuff is a problem, I will call the entire critter population because that's no doubt causing problems. For now, though, it was clearly the sweepers, the auto picking up. With the range that they have, they can pick up so many resources. Um, it's definitely going to make a difference, and it has, because now a lot of them are finished, and I've turned them off, because a lot of them resources have been put into our storage. Um, we're good to go. So over here, you can see there are two solar panels. They're not really working as I wanted them to, or good enough. Um, I used bunker towers there with some steel when I sent over the, the, the glass anyway. Uh, and then this base has been kitted out a little bit better for them. The Atmo suits, now, they come with Atmo suits. I haven't made them. I haven't sent them over. Remember, when they get in the spaceship, the rocket to fly over here, there was five of them that came over. Therefore, they had five Atmo suits. So when they arrived, I took them off, and that is what they are using there. Uh, so if they go in the rocket home again, they won't have Atmo suits technically. They are from the other asteroid, but they've done it by wearing them. Now, there is an issue with oxygen on this asteroid, and that is because I'm spreading it too thin. So I'm going to look at that immediately because now this asteroid is working. You can see the actual gases are doing what they're supposed to do. And that means that the oxygen that I'm sending over is not good enough. The oxygen that I'm sending over from this asteroid is going into their Atmos suits and their base. And the amount I'm sending over, as you can see, is nowhere near enough to contend with that. So what I actually need to do is pull the pull the trigger and set up a mini electrolysis system over on the second asteroid. And send water over because water transfers a lot easier. We have a lot more of it and it's easier to do. So that is my next step. I am going to set up an electrolysis system on asteroid number two. Now we have full infrastructure. So over the last sort of, I don't know, 10 minutes of the episode, we have jumped about 20 cycles. But both bugs are now resolved. Both the gas for the second asteroid and then the giant lag that would have been on... It, it just wouldn't have been very good video. So hopefully there's no issues there. Like I said, I did leave it. So other than building a few walls and a bit more digging, you've not missed anything in terms of setups. Uh, we're doing that all now. So nice and simple, a thrown together electrolysis room. I've not done any math on this and I probably should have. Uh, three of them, I'm going to say, is enough. What I'm going to try and go with is... The gas that comes from the home asteroid, I want to plumb that into the Atmos suits. Only the Atmos suits. The electrolysis room that I'm building now is going to provide only the oxygen for the base. So there's, there's twofold. That way I can keep an eye on it. If there isn't enough oxygen coming from the other asteroid to do the Atmos suits, they won't be able to use them. So nobody should get killed doing that. 
And if this doesn't work, where I've built it, you can see I can easily just build over there to the left and include an additional one, an additional um, electrolysis machine. Water is not a problem. We have established this tenfold. Um, so we are we're going to be using water to do so. I'm not going to set up any water or anything from this planet. There is a little bit and some dirty water we could clean. I'm just going to send the clean water from home because we have many hundred thousands of litres stored. Uh, I'll send all liquids to Asteroid 1 and process them there. Mainly because the infrastructure is already in place and it saves having to build and use a lot more power. The power in this asteroid is just going to be running the electrolysis machines which makes sense and the power being coal power that is uh, you can see we have 77 tons of coal on this asteroid of course i send that over from the home planet because we're not using it on the home planet we're using refined coal which is an infinite resource for us from the oil wells uh, and then if i need any more power it jumps to hydrogen but to be honest at the minute the hydrogen generator is never turning on because we just don't need it so a nice little setup here. There's quite a bit of work for them to do. You can see I've put the pipes in as well, which are the pipes that go to those vents. As soon as they're all completed, I'll switch them out. I'm not disconnecting anything at the minute until, of course, we know it's ready to go. The coal generators there, you can see, aren't running. They are automated. I'm not savage. So they are automated to one smart battery for this place as well. You can see there the battery station. We took over the, um, the plug slug room because... They kept escaping anyway, to be honest, so I've just let them do their own thing now. I don't care. We've got more than enough power coming in from them generators, and we're only using the coal when we need it because of the smart battery. I did have to send over quite a lot of um, refined metal, but I'd already done that, if you remember, previously before we had the bug. So it was actually quite an easy setup. The problem was... Uh, when we came over here first was capping the, the, the well plugging up the base again to not lose the good gases um, and having them survive on the very small amount of oxygen that we're sending over. Then getting the Atmo suit set up built was reasonably slow going. Uh, up until that point the oxygen was fine but then obviously I plumbed it into the Atmo suit sensors and that was where the issues were. However, we are over time now, so we're going to see the finale and finish of this setup for Asteroid 2 in the next episode. Thank you very much for watching. If you like the video, please click like. Any comments are welcome. As always, don't forget to subscribe to see more videos from myself. Again, thank you for watching. Take care. Goodbye.